Load testing allows you to put stress on a system. So for example, if you have a web application, you can simulate requests to it and see what happens with the application if it behaves the way you want or not. Moreover, you can push the limits and see at which point the application would break. That's called stress testing. So let's see how to um, test or load test a Vadin application using a tool called Apache JMeter, which is uh, free and open source. Um, so let's get started. Before designing the tests and running the tests, you need the application running somewhere, probably in a test environment. I'm going to use the same machine for running the tests and for running the application that I'm going to test. But uh, in a more realistic scenario, I would recommend you use different machines for that. For example, your test environment for running the application and your development uh, machine to run J JMeter and uh, to run the tests. All right. so. Let's compile the application first. Um, you can do that with Maven package and you will have to use the production build. And this is because, um, well, first of all, you want to be as close as possible to the production environment. So that you simulate uh, the behavior in production, which is what you are interested in, I believe. So uh, for that reason, only uh, you should do uh, production here. Mm, but also because it won't start any other kind of uh, things that might cause problems and make uh, requests to the to the application that you actually don't want uh, during testing. But I already uh, built the application, so all, all I have to do is jetty run. Okay. Uh, if you are using Spring Boot, for example, then you just compile the application using uh, the, this profile production. And then you uh, you run Java jar and specify the jar file, just as you would run your application only on your test server, right? Um, and if you are using Tomcat, if you are packaging the application as a, um, a WAR file, then you just deploy that to your test Tomcat. Again, build the WAR file using the production profile. Anyway, so let's um, uh, compile this application and. Um, once it compiles, we should double check that it runs and it's uh, working in the browser. And um, I'm going to use here Firefox because we're going to do some changes to the configuration of the browser. So let's see if it works. Right, so it works. That's it, right. We don't need this anymore. Uh, we can see that it's uh, the application is running in production mode here in the log. So that's uh, that's very good. Now let's jump jump into Apache JMeter. Mm, so the way this works is um, that you create a test plan. You can give it a name and all uh, kind of configurations. And you add configurations and kind of steps to it. It's like a script. So you can add, for example, a thread group, which is a bunch of users or a simulation of users uh, requesting your application. Listeners to see uh, the, the kind of the uh, results you can use uh, uh, post processors to kind of extract uh, information from the, for example, the responses, etc. And, and you can go ahead and actually do that uh, manually, but I find this option very uh, useful. Templates. So there is one called recording. And the cool thing about this is that it configures a uh, proxy um, listening to this port, 8888. And with that, you can use your browser to kind of record the script. So let's do that. So the host that I'm going to record is this machine. So localhost, uh, the recording open file, that's fine. And now we're going to use HTTP. Let's click create. So this adds, it's like uh, if you had done that here, um, a bunch of things. Uh, the most interesting ones are this one, Cookie Manager, because you need that if you want to use uh, Vadin applications, right? There's a thread group where you can configure the number of like uh, concurrent users and in which time all these users or are, they are actually threads are going to be started. And uh, the results of each uh, interaction with the application, like the requests and the responses. And the test script recorder as well. Uh, with uh, its uh, view results tree. We're going to uh, uh, see what exactly is um, this all about in a moment. So this one here, 
the HTTP test script recorder is what we are interested in. So it says that it's going to listen on this port. So in Firefox, I'm using Firefox here because, um, for example, I can keep using Chrome as my uh, normal uh, kind of uh, development or regular browser. And I can configure this for testing. Uh, so if I go to the configurations of the proxy, I'm going to tell it to use a manual proxy, which is in localhost or at localhost 8888. And that's it, really. So of course now, we're, since we're using a proxy, we have to request the application not with localhost, but with the IP address of my machine. So let's grab that from here um, very quickly. Actually, let's do it in a new. Uh, okay, let's do it in a new window here. So, if config, I think it is. Rep. And this is my IP, my local IP. So I'm gonna use that. Why that? Because uh, we have the proxy. So if we go for the local host, it won't uh, invoke or go through the proxy. Now, of course. The application doesn't uh, it doesn't work because we are going through a proxy which is not kind of started yet but we can start that here now they use the same icon here but these are different buttons this is for starting the load tests this is for starting the recorder okay so let's click that and it will tell you about the certificate that we are not interested in you can give this in names for example this is the home page so i'm going to call this home and and that's it we can go to the to the browser request the app and i'll type my name here and click say hello and that's it we don't even need the browser anymore stop recording and um we should see the results right here so these are the requests so the first one was a get to this address which is what I did first in the browser right and then there is a post to that same IP and there are some parameters and there is probably uh, the name that I introduced there and so forth and it, there is uh, also a response with some um, JSON object going on there then there is another request Mm. with uh, probably it was a click right it was probably the click on the button and then uh, let's see what's the response here so in the response we have the hello message that is shown in the notification and all the instructions to put that notification in the screen and these, uh, this, uh, I'm not sure what this is all about. Maybe because I closed the, the browser, I'm not sure. Anyway, uh, and this is a normal interaction, so we can use all that. And these are the results. Now, what this also um, did was it added all the requests here. Okay, these are HTTP requests. Like if we, we have we uh, we did uh, something like like this, uh, add sampler HTTP requests, and then we go and configure all the things. So the first one is, is pretty simple; it just goes there, and uh, it uses this uh, port number, and so forth. Okay, so let me see the log of this application for a moment. If I click now, start here. JMirror is going to take these requests and execute them according to this configuration. So we are doing it only once and um, using one second for that only request. Well, it doesn't matter because it's only one request. But let's start that. Uh, okay, this is going. This is uh, telling me to maybe. Uh, um, Save that. I'm gonna call this Vadin example, and I can share it later. 
I'm put, I'll, I'll, put, I'll put that link uh, uh, in the description of the video. Anyway, uh, now let's see the results. Now, so these are the results when I used the browser, and these are the results when I clicked the um, start button here to do the same again. And we go to the log, we probably have uh, some uh, warnings. So they say something about an invalid, invalid uh, security key. That's because when we uh, run here, the when we recorded the steps, the following happened. So uh, let's have a closer look, look to that. So we did this request, right? The first one to the application. We got all this. There's something called Vadin security mm, keep. So as you can see, there's zero BA. It starts with zero BA. Let me, uh, if I can maybe copy all this. Okay, let's not copy anything for now. Although I'm gonna need that. Okay, this is uh, very slow at the moment. <laughs> Let me see if it works. Just want to copy this. Okay, anyway, so we have the value security key somewhere, zero BA. Now the next request, which was the introduction of this value. Look at this, there's a token which starts with the same, zero BA, right? Uh, so it seems that whatever uh, you got here, you need to send there, and that's exactly uh, what it is. So this is a um, cross-site request forgery token, right? A security feature that Vadin includes by default. And you need to use that same token in every request. Now, when we run the, um, the tests, these are the results of that test. The request to the application and the response that also had a key. Now it's 1C1, it's different to the previous one. But when we do the next one, the next request, that is, we're using 0BA, which is what we recorded, right? So we need to change that. This string, we need to change it. Okay. Uh, we need to extract that from here. You see, it's super slow for some reason. Maybe it's because I'm, I zoom in the application so that you can see better. Anyway, we need to extract that and put it into the other requests. Uh, the way you do that is you, for this request, you add a post processor that's after the request, so you have the, the response. And you can use, for example, a regular expre expression extractor. So make sure it's, it's here. And, and you can specify a regular expression there. So uh, this is what you get there, right, in the response. So we're interested in this number, whatever it is, and these 36 characters, I know, because I counted them. <laughs> and uh, I, I didn't do it manually, but I counted them on my ID. Anyway, <laughs> uh, so we need to extract this value, and it's 36 characters. So this is the regular expression for that, right? Any character, 36 times. And we need to extract that. We don't need the whole, this whole thing, maybe. We only need that, right? So we can put something called a capturing group. So it's going to, in the first capturing group is going to have that. And here it says like we can use this template to extract that value. So it's the first one, it starts at one. If there was another one, then this would be the second one. Okay, so we have extracted that, and we can assign that to a variable. Christ cross-site request forgery, for example, token. And I like to use the name here of the variable. Moreover, the way you use this variable, you don't have to do this right here, but 
the way you use it is like this I can type right so that's how you use it later so that way I can see that this is the variable and I know how to use it just by looking at this string all right so here we need to use that so we need to type this thing here but imagine if, if I had a lot of requests here it's only one two three additional ones so that's fine I could do it manually but what if I had many you can use the search tool here and we are going to search you can actually search for the whole thing okay and we need to change instead of having that number we use this cross site request forgery token okay let me see if it's everything's all right let's try to find so it's finding all of the occurrences of that string now let's uh, just replace all and now we can see that it's going to replace that this string before doing the request it's going to change that value with the um, the expression extractor or, or this uh, this uh, bit of the regular expression okay all right so let's try again now we probably want to clean these results which is you can do with clear or there's a shortcut to do that also so let's see if we don't get this anymore let's run and it seems we don't get that moreover we get what we expected so we have um, this is the first request with the value and then we have the um, the response the, the notification right so it worked now um, this is a very very simple application but you can use the same method to extract more things for for example let me go to actually the results tree it's fine so you'll find sync ID and client ID everywhere so you might want to extract that too and you can use it in the same way you can use uh, mm, uh, what is it called here um, post processors to do that whatever it's best for the situation you are in and what you need to extract from the response body you can do it like that for this simple application we don't have to do it but I'll, I'll leave that as a, home, as a homework for you there are a couple of videos that I'm going to include in the description of this video that show more advanced scenarios um, but let's now see how to mm, so how, how do we run the tests like the actual test um, because we are only using one one user right but for that I'm going to stop the application and I'm going to um, I'm going to uh, decrease the memory I think it's args line or actually it's jvm args yeah I think it's something like that xmx here we can pass um, arguments to jvm and let's use 8 megabytes only so this is going to start with little memory and let me see that the application loads in the browser okay it does now back to jmeter here in the thread group you find the number of threads so for example what if we have 1000 users in say five seconds mm, what do you think would happen with this application let's see so in the results tree we start to get all these thousand requests but this is not very useful right 
what you probably want to do is you might want to add another kind of um, listener like this one summary report there are many uh, there are even uh, something that creates an HTTP report which is pretty cool but uh, I like this because you can focus on this number this uh, like the request that uh, return an error so let's clear let's clear all the results I just used the charcut but now let's focus on this play this so 1000 uh, threats and we'll see if there are any errors there are some other interesting uh, stats about this but let's focus for now on this so it doesn't break so all the requests are processed and they show the notification apparently or at least return the, the JSON that will show the notification in the browsers so it's looking good uh, with 8 was it yeah 8 megabytes of uh, hip memory it still works so you, you can serve 1000 users simultaneously if they arrive around 5 seconds uh, or in a time of 5 seconds or window of 5 seconds uh, um, to the application okay so what happens now if we have now let's say 10,000 will this work so let's again uh, clear the results here and try that again so we see it's processing oh, so far so good and now we have some requests are not being um, successful here so we have another so three percent Uh, you might be thinking or wondering why does it take 20 seconds if we say it 5 seconds the 5 seconds is for starting all these threads but the server might take more time so it total took 20 seconds and you can see there were errors so 2.36% of the requests didn't uh, went th through so we are now kind of doing a bit of um, stress testing so what happens then if we have only uh, 2,000 let's say we need something like I don't know 4,000 or something like that would be okay so 2,000 with 8 me uh, megabytes uh, it works okay so 4,000 now we're trying to find the point more or less the point in which the application cannot take more requests now um, I put a little memory so we see this quicker but it's not only about memory right it's about the resources of the, the, the processing resources as well so that's important and if you have an, a real application it probably has a connection to a database so all that stuff is being tested here with this kind of uh, load testing tool that is so you need to keep that in mind I'm just playing with one variable which is memory just to decrease and so if we go and let's say so the application didn't work for 4,000 I think it was where I put here but it worked for 2,000 so between 2,000 and 4,000 must be the, the kind of the limit that you can uh, you can achieve with as little memory as uh, 8 megabytes but what if we put for example 256 which is more what you might start to find even much more like 1 giga or something like that even more but uh, let's try that just for fun to see if uh, if we can find uh, kind of a configuration that would work with that and of course it's not linear it's not like uh, um, 2000 was okay with 8 megabytes then with 16 I can do 4000 because again it's not only about memory uh, it's about computing resources the processor All right so let's try that just for fun so I'm just showing you a way of kind of uh, what, what you would do to experiment with the application to see what happens so I changed the the the, uh, the memory now we are reducing quite drastically the the number of errors uh, but that's not the only thing like I said you will have to adjust some other things like uh, probably connections uh, 
pull pulls what else uh, uh, resources of, of any kind that your application is, is consuming that's gonna that's gonna be a, a much important uh, I believe difference but you can see that at least with <laughs> with eight megabytes we were able to serve 2,000 and uh, concurrent users uh, for this very very simple application but I think uh, uh, that uh, gives you an idea of how to use this tool and how to uh, interpret all these results a little bit we didn't go through all these but uh, but uh, again go to documentation is very good and uh, get familiar with the tool all right so let me know if you have any questions about this topic or ideas on what you want me to cover in future videos thanks for watching and i'll see you in the next video